The next phase of the search, the plan is to deploy an unmanned submarine to help find the black boxes. CCTV's Jim Spellman is joining us here in the studio to tell us more about that, to kind of give us an idea of what this device could do. It's really a fascinating piece of machinery, Mike. Once an approximate location for the wreckage is determined, the U.S. Navy will deploy an autonomous underwater vehicle, an AUV, called the Bluefin 21. Here's how it works. The Bluefin 21 is currently on the Australian ship Ocean Shield. As this animation from Bluefin Robotics shows, the device is lowered into the water where it will establish GPS lock and a communications link via satellite. Engineers will then be able to monitor the AUV's progress from the surface. Once communications are established, the torpedo-shaped robotic craft begins its descent. It will use side-scan sonar to map the ocean floor, sending information back to the ship. Bluefin 21 can operate at depths up to 4,500 meters. The AUV will conduct a methodical search in a pattern known as mowing the grass, following a methodical pattern back and forth across the seafloor. The batteries can operate for up to 25 hours and can travel at speeds up to 4.5 knots, about 8 kilometers per hour. In addition to sonar capabilities, the Bluefin 21 has a magnetometer to find metal objects and a high-resolution underwater camera capable of operating even in the darkness of the ocean's depths. As battery life winds down, the Bluefin 21 will begin its ascent where the dying batteries are swapped out for fresh ones and another mission can begin. But before Bluefin 21 is deployed, investigators want to use the towed pinger locator to get as much information as possible about the source of the pings. They need to get as many readings as they can to triangulate the location. And since the batteries in the black box pingers are already past their 30-day lifespan, they know they won't get another chance, Mike. Yeah, boy, the time's really running out. That was fascinating to see how it actually works. Now, they've got these four pings. You would think that ought to narrow the search down, but I guess it's more complicated than that, isn't it? Sound underwater does not travel the way it does between you and I here in the air. First of all, you have to take into consideration the temperature of the water, underwater currents, and it's not flat on the seabed. Imagine being almost like in the Grand Canyon at certain points. You're in valleys, there are mountains, there are ridges. All of that can bounce the sound around. And the floor of the sea is filled with a dense silt that they call ocean snow. This is everything in the ocean that filters its way down to the bottom. That will muffle the sound, alter the way it will refract back up towards the surface, and could even bury some items in any potential wreckage, including even the black boxes. That would change the way those pings are making it up to these detectors. And we know it's a race against the clock, and then there's all these complications. It's an amazing story. Jim, thanks so much.